In today's video, we'll be solving some construction, welding, and electrical mathematics questions. If you're new to this channel, please take this time out to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified whenever we post new videos. All right, guys, so let's get started, all right? So here in question one, we have Mr. Green, who is a technician, works six hours, 20 minutes on Monday, five hours, 40 minutes on Wednesday. The total number of hours worked is, and this is a multiple choice question. So here we have A, 12 hours, B, 12 and a half hours, C, 13 and a half hours, and D, 21 hours, all right? So being that they ask us for the total number of hours, we need to add up the total time that he worked on Monday to the total time that he worked on Wednesday, all right? So on Monday, he worked six hours, 20 minutes, which we can re represent like that. And on Wednesday, he worked five hours, 40 minutes, all right? And we need to add these things. No. 40 plus 20, that's 60, all right? And this is the minutes section. Here we have the hours. Now, 60 minutes is equivalent to one hour, all right? So we can take that one, that 60 minute over here, which we can convert to one hour, which means we'll be left with zero minutes over here. And we'll have one plus six, that's seven, plus five, that's... 12 all right so therefore he would work a total of 12 hours all right so therefore our answer would have been a all right so that would have been our answer for this particular question and this would be the solution for that now let's look, now at, let's question look at question two all right so what is the total cost of 25 welding rods at 35 dollars and 60 cents each and here we have, again, it's another multiple choice question. A, $525.60. B, $534.00. C, $890. And D, $3,560. All right. So they ask us what is the total cost of 25 welding rods at 35 point six zero dollars each all right which is the same thing as thirty five dollars sixty cents now let's see what we can do all right so being that the cost of one welding rod would have been thirty five dollars sixty cents if we want to buy 25 welding rods we need to multiply the 25 times the cost of one welding rod all right that simply means the total cost would be equal to 25 times 35.60, all right? And this, if we put that in our calculator, we'll get $890.00, all right? Which means our answer for question two would have been C, all right? So that's how we treat with a question like that. Now let's look at question three. All right, now let's look at question three. All right, and in this question we have, what is the wall thickness of a pipe with an external diameter of 149 millimeters and an internal diameter of 98 millimeters, all right? So if we want to find the wall thickness, the wall thickness, all right? So the wall thickness, will be equal to the difference between the external diameter and the interior diameter, all right? So we'll have this one, 149 minus the interior diameter, which is 98 
millimeters, all right? And when we find the difference between 149 and 98, we'll obtain 51 millimeters, all right? Which simply means that our answer would have been C for question three, all right? So that is pretty much how we treat with a question like this one. All right, now let's look at question four. A computer technician started a job at 8.37 a.m. It took him four hours and 35 minutes to complete it. At what time did it finish, all right? So at what time did it finish? So he started the job at 8.37 a.m. And it took him, let's say, four hours and 35 minutes to complete it. So if I add this four hours, 35 minutes to the time that he started, let's see what time he would finish, all right? So 37 plus 35, that would give me 72, all right? So I can get 60 out of 72 because 60 minutes is the same thing as one hour. So I'm going to take the 60 out of the 72. So I'll be left with 12 minutes. And I brought that 60 over the hours section, which I'll convert to one hour, all right? So one plus eight, that's nine plus four, that's 13, all right? So he would finish at 13, 12 p.m. And you might be saying to yourself, that answer is not up here, all right? But of course it is, all right? So 13, 12 is the same thing as one twelve. all right? So that's the same thing as 112. So this is what they normally use or how they normally read army time, all right? So 1312 is the same thing as 112 p.m., all right? So that would have been our solution. And that is how we treat with a problem like this one. All right, let us look at question five, all right? So five pieces measuring 26, 47, 38, 27, and 32 centimeters are cut from steel bar that was 200 centimeters long, allowing for a total of one centimeter for waste in cutting. What is the length of the piece remaining, all right? So we want to know the length of the piece remaining. So what we need to do, we need to add all that was cut from the steel bar that we had, all right, plus the amount that will waste, which is one centimeters, and then subtract all of that from the length of the steel bar, all right? So therefore, the piece that remain, all right, so the piece remaining, would be equal to 200 minus, all right, so we'll subtract all of this from the, the length of the steel bar. So 26 plus 47 plus 38 plus 27 and uh, 32 right there plus the waist, which is one centimeters, all right? So when we do that, we'll obtain 200 minus, when we add up all of this in the bracket, we'll be left with 171, 200 minus 171 will leave us with a 29 right there, all right? So our solution would have been 29 centimeters, which means the correct answer would have been B, all right? So this is pretty much how we treat with question five. All right, so let's see what we have in question six, all right? So a contractor bought a new piece of machinery for $1,380. And at the end of two and a half months, sold it for $2,590. How much profit did he make? All right. So pretty much the profit would be equal to the difference between what he sold it for and what he would have paid for it. All right. So he actually sold it for $2,590. And he originally bought it for $1,380, all right? So when we find the difference between $2,590 and $1,380, we'll get $1,210, all right? 
which means our correct answer or the correct answer for question six would have been B right here, option B, all right? So that is pretty much how we treat with question six. All right, so let's look at what we have in question seven. If a 0 0.254 meter diameter electrical conduit is to be 6.191 meters long with a tolerance of plus or minus 0 0.318, find the longest and shortest acceptable length all right so the key thing here they are asking us about what longest and shortest acceptable length so we are dealing with the length so this 0 0.254 diameter here is a distraction they want us to focus on the 6.191 meters long all right because that's what we're talking about here the length and not the diameter all right so hopefully that makes a lot of sense so if we want to know the longest all right so if we want to know the longest length or the longest acceptable length we would have to add the tolerance all right so here we have the 6.191 and if we add 0 0.318 to this we'll obtain 6.509 meters as our answer all right and from this alone we can deduce the correct answer which would have been part a or option a rather all right so the correct answer would have been option a because only in option a we said the 6.509 meters all right and we can also go on all right just to demonstrate this part of the question the shortest length how you would actually obtain the shortest length is to actually uh, minus the tolerance all right from the length so here we have this now and we minus it and now we'll obtain 5.873 meters all right so the longest and the shortest acceptable length would have been 6.509 meters and 5.873 meters respectively all right so that is how we treat with question seven all right so let us see what we have in question eight so how long will it take to solder 45 pins if each pin requires six and three quarter minutes all right allowing one minute per pin for placing in a jig all right so the time that it takes to place each pin in the jig is one minute per pin all right so in all being that we have 45 pins so solder that will take us 45 minutes so it will take us 45 minutes in all when we put in the whole 45 pins and all of that all right so if each pin requires six and three quarter minutes to be soldered then to obtain the amount of time that it will take to solder the 45 pins i must first multiply 45 times six and three over four all right and don't forget that I also have to add the time that it will take to put each pin in the jig, which would amount to 45 minutes, all right? So my answer would actually be this when I simplify and work out all of this, all right? So this is the same thing as 45 times six. All right, so let's see what we can do. We can rewrite six and three quarter as 6.75. All right, so three divided by four, you'll obtain 0 0.75. All right, plus 45 out here. Keep this in bracket. Now, 45 times 6.75 would actually give you 303.75. All right, plus 45. All right, so when we actually add these things, now we'll obtain 348.75, which is the same thing as 348 and 3 over 4. All right, so we can represent the 3 over 4 as 0.75, all right, as demonstrated when solving this question. All right, so that is pretty much how we treat with question 8. Now let us look at question 9. All right, so let's see what we have in question nine. So a worker purchased tools amounting to $865, all right? 
So if he received a 10% discount, how much did he pay, all right? So after getting a 10% discount, how much did the worker paid for the tools, all right? So first thing first, we need to find the discount, all right? We need to know what the discount represent in dollars, all right? So we know that the discount is 10%. We can represent 10% as 10 over 100. I want to know what 10 percent of 85 well 865 dollars is all right and when we solve this thing so we can then say what put this over one all right so 10 times 865 that would actually give me 8650 divided by 100 all right and this will amount to $86.50. So this is the discount. Now what I want to know is the amount is how much did he pay after the discount, all right? So the cost after discount would be equal to, I have to subtract the discount from the original cost, all right? And the original cost was what? eight hundred and sixty five dollars and now i can subtract the discount from this which is eighty six dollars fifty cents and i'll get seven hundred and seventy eight dollars and fifty cents all right so that is the solution for question nine and that's how we treat with a question like this one all right so here we have question 10 so in preparing an estimate for an installation, a plumber assumes a 15% waste factor. If the finished job contains 1,230 square feet of piping, how many feet of pipe should the plumber order, all right? So what we want to know is what does this 15% waste factor represent in square feet of piping, all right? So we need to find 15% of this 1,230 right here, all right? So that would actually give us the waste factor in piping. So we want to find or know what the waste factor represents and that would be equal to 15 over 100 times 1,230, all right? And if we do that after solving all of that, you will obtain 184.5 square feet, all right? All right, so the plumber assumes that 184.5 square feet of the piping will be waste, all right? So if we want to know now, now what we want to know now is how many feet of pipes should the plumber add, all right? So being that the job requires the 1,230 square feet to be completed, and we know that 184.5 square feet of the piping will be waste, then we need to add this to that, and that will be the amount of piping that will need to complete the job, all right? So the order should actually be 1,000. 230 plus 184.5 and we'll obtain 1414.5 square feet of piping all right which means our answer would have been c all right so we can round this thing up to 1415 square feet all right, and we'll get this solution right here. So the correct answer for this one would have been option C right here, all right? All right, so here we have question 11, all right? So an electrician charges $23,200 to wire four studio apartments. How many should he receive for wiring 10 similar studio apartments, all right? So right here, we can set this thing up in a proportion so we want to look at charge all right versus the number of studio 
all right that we're looking at all right so let's see now he charges twenty three thousand two hundred dollars to to wire four studio apartments now what we want to do now is how much money which we don't know are the charge to wire 10 studio apartments and this is actually a direct proportional problem all right which simply means if the number of apartment increases then the charge will also increase all right so that makes this thing a direct proportional problem all right so i can now cross multiply all right so 23,200 times 10 will give me 232,000 all right being equal to 4 times x which is 4x and what i can do now is to simply divide both sides by 4 to get rid of the 4 right here so x would be equal to $58,000 all right so that simply means that the charge to wire 10 similar studio apartments would have been $58,000, all right? So that is how we treat with a question like this one. All right, so here we have question 12. So the electricity from a power plant was distributed in the ratio 2 to 8 between the rural and urban areas respectively. How many power went to the rural districts if 15,400 megawatts was produced all right so what we want to do now is to find out how much of this 15,400 megawatts represents the rural district all right so that is how much or how many power went to the rural district all right and we know that here the important thing about this ratio they said what in the ratio 2 to 8 between the rural and urban area respectively so of course the 2 right there represent the rural and the 8 would represent the urban all right so what we first want to know is the total ratio which would have been what 2 plus 8 and that is actually 10 all right so the total ratio would be equal to 10 now what we actually want to do now is to do what? Find out how much this two represents. So the rural area are rural districts. So rural, again, this two represent the rural. So we'll have two out of the 10, all right? So this two, this ratio two right here represent the amount of power that went to the rural area. And the total ratio is 10. So two out of 10 times the amount of power that was distributed, which is what? 15,400, all right? And I can now put this thing over one and multiply across, all right? So two times 15,400, that would actually give me 30,800. And if I divide this thing by 10, I'll obtain 3,000 and 80 megawatts all right so that is how you treat with a scenario like this quite easy actually all right all right so here we have question 13. so the profit from a business partnership is shared in the ratio of five to seven for mr brown and mr black respectively if the profit made was fourteen thousand four hundred dollars then mr brown will receive all right so we need to calculate how much Mr. Brown would have received, all right? So first thing first, we want to know the total ratio, just like the previous question. So the total ratio would be equal to five plus seven, so five plus seven, and that is 12, all right? Now, which of the ratio represent Mr. Brown, all right? So again, the ratio of five to seven for Mr. Brown and Mr. Black respectively. So the five would represent the share for Mr. Brown and the seven represent the share for Mr. Black, all right? So we want to find how much Mr. Brown would receive. So Mr. Brown would actually receive, and we, we know that his ratio is five out of the total ratio, which is 12, 
and we want to know how much he received out of the total profit, all right? Which is what? 14,400, all right? And again, we can put this thing over one and multiply across, all right? So five times 14,400, that will give us 72,000 over 12 times one, which is 12. And 72,000 divided by 12, that will actually give us $6,000, all right? So that is pretty much how we treat with a question like question 13, all right? And a scenario like this one. All right, so here we have question 14, all right? So two lengths of conduits are in the ratio E to 5, respectively. If the first length is 120 meters, what is the second length, all right? And when we have something like this, we can simply set this thing up in a proportion, all right? So here we have the ratios, all right? And we can compare it with the actual length. All right, so the ratio that would represent the first length would have been what, eight? And we actually know that the first length is actually 120. Now we want to know the second length, all right? which we don't know as yet, but we know the ratio for that, which is five. And now we can cross multiply, all right? So let's see what we would get. So a times x, that would actually give us eight x. Five times 120, that will actually give us 600, all right? And now we are required to divide both sides by eight. Right, so 8 cancel 8 and x would be equal to 75 meters. All right, and of course, there are many more ways how you could solve a question like this. The goal is that you obtain the correct solution, which would have been 75. So the correct option here would have been C. All right, and th that is pretty much that for this question. All right, so whichever method you choose to use. All right, that's okay as long as the method is mathematically sound and you, you work the question correctly, all right? All right, let's look at question 15, all right? So a technician spends $1,260.40 to purchase the necessary parts for a repair to a machine and sells the same parts to his customer at 35% markup. What is the final charge, all right? So what this simply means, so the 35% markup simply means that he would have added 35% of what he spent to the final charge, all right? So what we want to know is what the markup represents in dollars, all right? So we know that he, he, he the markup is 35%, so 35 over 100 times the original charge, which is 1,260.40. All right, and I can put this over one and cross multiply. So 35 times 1,260.40, that would actually give me 44,114 over 100. And if I divide 44,114 by 100, I'll obtain $441.14, all right? So what I want to know now is the final charge. And again, the final charge would be equal to the amount of money that he would have spent all right plus the markup which is 441 dollars 14 cents all right and this would amount to 1701 dollars 54 cents all right so this is pretty much how we treat with a scenario like this all right so that's pretty much it for this scenario all right, so let us look at question 16. If it took 30 days for 10 men to wire a hose, how long would it take six men to wire the same hose, provided that the work rate is the same, all right? So this actually means the criteria of being a indirect proportional question, all right? 
So we can compare days and uh, the number of men. All right, so days and men. So we know that it will take 30 days for 10 men to do the job. And uh, we want to know what? How long, which is how many days will it take six men to do the same job? All right. So being that this is a indirect proportional scenario, we can multiply straight across. So six times X, that would give us six X. That would be equal to 10 times 30, which is 300. And now we are required to divide both sides by six. Six cancel six and X is equal to 300 divided by six, which is 50, all right? So it would actually take 50 days for six men to complete the same job, all right? Which simply means that this is actually a indirect proportional scenario, all right? Which makes a lot of sense because if 10 men can do a job in 30 days, then it is safe to assume that it will take six men a longer time to complete the same work, all right? So as one variable, which is men decrease, the other variable, which is days, will increase, all right? Which means we have a indirect proportional scenario on our hands. Now let us look at question 17. All right, so here we have question 17. The expression below is used by Mr. Jones to calculate the number of trainees needed to work in the electrical department, all right? So the square root of three times t squared minus three, all right? Using this formula, calculate how many trainees would be needed when t is equal to two, all right? So when t isn't equal to two, we can use the expression. So here would have the square root of t squared minus three. All right, so what will happen when t is equal to two? So what we are simply going to do, we are going to simply substitute two for t. So wherever we have t, we replace the t with two. And we're going to square whatever t is, minus three, all right? So we still have the square root of three. Two squared is the same thing as what? Two squared is the same thing as four. So we'll have four here, minus three. Still have the square root of three times four, which is 12 minus three. And this 12 minus three is nine. And the square root of nine is actually three. All right, so my solution would actually be three for question 17, all right? So this is pretty much how you treat with a scenario like question 17. And that's pretty much that. Now let us look at question 18. All right, let us look at question 18. So a bonus of $84,249 was shared in the ratio two to three to five. How much did each person receive, all right? And this one is quite easy, all right? So let's see the first person. So the first person would receive, all right? And what we want to know is the total ratio. So let's write that up here. So the total ratio would have been 10, all right? Because two plus three, that's five. Five plus five, that's 10, all right? So that's how I got the 10 right here. So the first person, the first year is two out of the total ratio, which is 10 times what we want to know now is how much does two, the ratio two represent out of the total amount that was shared, all right? That was shared which is $84,249, all right? So two times 84,249, that will give us 168,498, all right? Over 10 times one, that's 10, which means this will actually give us 16,849, dollars 80 cents all right so that would represent the first person or the first year now let us look at the amount that the second person would receive 
all right that would be equal to three now out of the total ratio which is 10 times the same amount 84,249 all right can put that over one just the same so three times 84,249 that will give us 252,747 over 10 times 1 which is 10 and if I divide 252,747 by 10 I'll obtain 25,274.70 all right so that's pretty much the first two share now let us look at the amount that the third person would receive all right so the third person would receive and again the the third share would have been five out of the total ratio which is 10 all right times eighty four thousand two hundred and forty nine all right and what we can now do we can reduce this thing a little bit to make this thing easier for us all right so of course you could have just simply put this over one and multiply across or you could reduce first so five into itself goes one five into ten goes two times and now what we can do one times eight four thousand two hundred and forty nine will remain the same thing over two times one which is two and what we want to do now is to divide this thing by two and see what we'll get so when we do that we'll obtain forty two thousand one hundred and twenty four dollars fifty cents all right so that is pretty much how we treat with a scenario like question 18 all right and that's pretty much question 18 now let us look at question 19 all right, so here we have question 19. So this asks us to solve the following, the square root of 36 plus five square plus eight, all right? Which is actually a very simple problem. So we have the square root of 36 plus five squared plus eight, all right? So the square root of 36, that would have been six plus five squared is actually 25 plus eight. Now 6 plus 25, that is actually 31 plus 8. 31 plus 8, that would actually give us a 39 right there, all right? So this would actually be our solution for question 19. So quite easy, all right? So that is pretty much how we treat with question 19. All right, so let us look at the final question, question 20. So if cables cost $1,440 and ends cost $240, what is the total cost of the cables and the ends, all right? And this is pretty easy actually. So all we are required to do, so the total cost would be equal to what? $1,440 plus the cost for the ends, which is 240 all right and that will give us 1600 all right so 1680 dollars all right so let me re rewrite this thing so 1680 dollars so that's pretty much a solution for this thing all right so here we have part b of question 20 all right which is the final question that we'll be looking at in this video all right so estimate the cost of erecting a pipe system if it requires five lengths of pipe castings at $5,350 each. All right, let us look at part B of question 20, all right? So estimate the cost of erecting a pipe system if it requires five lengths of pipe castings, all right, at $5,350 each. And we're going to analyze this question as we go through it, all right? So it asks us to estimate the cost, all right? So we want to know the cost. So the cost will be equal to, here we are required to, to do what? It requires five lengths of pipe castings and each casting will cost us what? 
$5,350 each plus let's see what else we have to look at we need four elbow castings at $7,450 each so we need four of these all right so we're just setting up a little casting here to help us to calculate what we need to and two flanges castings at $1,200 each all right so we need two of these Then it goes on to tell us that the job also requires two plumbers who will work for eight hours each, all right? And so we have two plumbers who will work at eight hours each, all right? And one will charge what? One will charge $1,600 and the other will charge what? $1,450 per hour, all right? So once we calculate this thing, we actually will obtain the answer for this particular question, all right? So all you have to do now is to simply, what you could do is to put all of this in your calculator. And if you do so, you'll obtain $83,350, all right? All right, so that's pretty much how you treat with a question like this. All right, guys, so that's where we'll be ending today's video. Don't forget to like the video. And if you haven't yet done it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified whenever we post new videos. Until next time, thanks for watching.